Hello, Latin geometry students. In this assignment, we're going to talk about the quadrilateral family tree. See, there's a whole bunch of different types of quadrilaterals out there, and they're all related to each other in some weird ways. For example, all these shapes are quadrilaterals. A quadrilateral is just a polygon with four sides. But the, some of these have some different rules for them based on what specific things are going on within these shapes. For example, the general shape for anything with four sides is a quadrilateral. Quad is four, lateral is sides. Quadrilateral just means it's got four sides. But we have specific types of quadrilaterals, some that you're familiar with, like a rectangle or a square, and then some you're less familiar with, like a parallelogram and a rhombus and a trapezoid. And these are all interconnected, and we got to be able to look at a picture of one of these shapes and tell which one it is, because they have slightly different rules applying to them. So here's the quadrilateral family tree in general. All the shapes we're going to look at are going to fall into the category quadrilateral. But then we have the types over here, which we call trapezoids. We have a basic trapezoid and an isosceles trapezoid. We also have some other funny-looking shapes that don't come up that often, like a kite. And then the main sequence of quadrilaterals start with a parallelogram. And types of parallelograms are the shapes you're probably most familiar with. That's where we find a rectangle and a rhombus. And if something is both a rectangle and a rhombus, then it becomes a square. So let's talk about this tree. Let's start over here on the left where we talk about trapezoids. A trapezoid is what happens when you take a quadrilateral and give it one set of parallel sides. See, in this case, this trapezoid over here, the top and the bottom are parallel to each other. One set of parallel sides is a trapezoid. You'll notice there's only one set because the left and the right side aren't parallel. Over here, this shape, this also has one set of parallel sides. In this case, instead of the top and the bottom, it's the left and the right. So it's just a trapezoid kind of turned on its side, but it has one set of parallel sides. What about the other sides? What about these two? Well, they could just be doing anything. They just connect the parallel sides. And in this case, uh, they're not the same as each other. These two sides are different. One is uh, short. The other one's a little bit more slanty and a little bit longer. But this is what makes something a trapezoid, just one set of parallel sides. If we took those two sides, the two other ones, what we call the legs, and we made them the same length, see, we're starting with the parallel sides, again, the top and the bottom. If we make the left and the right the same length, we get what's called an isosceles trapezoid. Isosceles meaning the same thing it did with triangles, where just the two sides are the same thing. So our isosceles trapezoid has two congruent sides in a trapezoid. Okay, off in the other direction, we talk about a kite, which is probably the least used of these shapes that we're going to do. The only really thing you got to know about a kite is that if we were to draw in the diagonals, they're going to make a right angle. But this is what a kite is. Two of these two sides are congruent to each other, and these two sides down here are congruent to each other. But normally, like with a rectangle, you think the congruent sides are across from each other. Not in a kite. It's like it's been rearranged as a rectangle. And again, the only other rule you got to know about a uh, kite is that if we draw in these diagonals, they make a right angle with each other. Okay, the main sequence of quadrilaterals. The first shape that we get is a parallelogram. This one has the most rules. We're going to talk about this one in a separate assignment here. But a parallelogram is what you get if you have two sets of parallel sides. And then if you take your parallelogram and give it right angles, we're going to get a rectangle. If you make all the sides the same, we get a rhombus. And if you do both, you get a square. Let's say that again. For a parallelogram, the top and the bottom are parallel to each other the left and the right are also parallel to each other. That's what makes it a parallelogram. It has two sets of parallel sides, as opposed to the trapezoid, which only had one set of parallel sides. We represent that by putting arrows in. Remember, arrows representing things that are parallel. Top is parallel to bottom, and left is parallel to right. That's how we show something's a parallelogram. Now, if we take that parallelogram, and we just kind of move the tops over until we get a 90-degree angle in it, once you have one 90-degree angle, all the angles turn out to be 90 degrees. And that's what makes a rectangle, is when you take a parallelogram and throw in a 90-degree angle, we get a rectangle. We'll talk a little bit more about that shape in a little bit, too. So if, if on the other hand, instead of messing with the angles, we mess with the sides. We take our parallelogram and make all four sides the same length. That creates a rhombus. You're probably used to calling this shape a diamond from grade school. But a diamond could be a rhombus. It could be a kite. It's not a geometry-specific word. So this is called a rhombus. If we do some, the same thing to both, in other words, if we give it both right angles and four sides the same thing, we get a square, which has 90 degree angles and all four sides the same. So this is our family tree, and what we need to be able to do is recognize the shapes, either based on words or the symbols that we use in the pictures. 
for example, if we start over by the uh, quadrilateral up top, a quadrilateral just has four sides. Trapezoid has one set of parallel sides. An isosceles trapezoid has a set of parallel sides because it's a type of trapezoid. And the legs are also congruent. The two other sides are congruent to each other. They're not parallel, they're just congruent. If we talk about a parallelogram, we have two sets of parallel sides. Top is parallel to bottom and left is parallel to the right. A rectangle is what happens if we take a parallelogram and give it right angles. A rhombus is what happens if we take a parallelogram and use the same length sides for all four sides. And then a square doesn't have any of its own rules. It just gets all the rules for a rectangle and a rhombus and parallelograms. We have right angles and all four sides are congruent. And again, a kite, which we don't use that much, there are congruent sides, but they're not opposite. They're kind of next to each other instead. Now, this is using it in words. Usually, we, nobody wants to write out all these words, so we do this with symbols instead. The trapezoid, as we said, one set of parallel sides. So we put in these little arrows indicating that those two sides are parallel to each other. An isosceles trapezoid, well, we still have the set of parallel sides, but then we also have to make it isosceles. These other two sides are congruent to each other. For a parallelogram, the opposite sides are parallel, two sets of parallel sides. In other words, top is parallel to bottom and left is parallel to right. There's a whole bunch of other rules that come with a parallelogram and a rectangle and a rhombus and a square, which we'll talk about in another assignment. For a rectangle, that's a parallelogram, so we still have two pairs of parallel sides, but we also get 90 degree angles. So a rectangle is 90 degree angles. A rhombus is also still a parallelogram, so opposite sides are parallel, but we have all four sides the same. And finally, a square is both a rectangle and a rhombus. It gets both of those sets of rules. And then the kite, we have congruent sides, but they're not across from each other. They're kind of next to each other instead. So what we want to do with this assignment now is just be able to identify what shapes we're looking at. And I don't want this to be a little kindergarten thing, so it'll be a little bit harder than this. We're going to not make the shapes too extreme. They're all going to look like squares, but you got to go based on the markings to figure out what shape you're looking at. So in this case, here are six shapes, and using the tick marks in the picture, we want to identify which one each one is. Okay, number one, all four sides have the same marking in it, so all four sides have the same length. That's a rhombus. In number two, we have four right angles. Four right angles is a rectangle. Problem number three, we have a set of parallel sides, but we only have one set of parallel sides. That is a trapezoid. Problem number four, we have four congruent sides, and we have four right angles. This is probably the first of these shapes that you ever learned. This is a square. Problem number five. All right, so we got some congruent sides here, but they're kind of messed up. They're next to each other. The top is congruent to the right, and the bottom is congruent to the left. This is a kite. And finally, problem number six. We have two sets of parallel sides. The top is parallel to the bottom. The left is parallel to the right. This is a parallelogram.